Stark Community Foundation and United Way of Greater Stark County are so excited to hold the week-long Think Big 2021 event during the week of October 17th through the 23rd. This year, we're presenting Think Big in a unique format focused on a very prevalent issue, poverty. This is Claire. Claire is a single mother working to break her family out of the cycle of poverty and she needs your help. During your community conversations this year, we challenge you to brainstorm solutions that help Claire escape poverty. You could focus on her transportation issues, her health care needs, her children's educational needs, her employment dilemma, or any other specific topic. Or you can take a broad approach by focusing on multiple aspects of her situation. Let's break down Claire's story. Claire is an African-American single female in her 40s who has lived in Canton for all of her life. Claire has three children. Her oldest child is a 19-year-old boy. Unfortunately, he was caught with drugs as an adult and now has a criminal record. This causes extreme stress for the family because he is unable to find employment and still lives at home barely contributing. From time to time, he helps his mother care for his younger siblings when childcare is not available. But otherwise, he is a typical teenager off with his friends and on his phone. His biological father, who is not the father of his younger sisters, is absent. Claire's second child is a 13-year-old girl. She is an eighth grader in public school, has severe dental needs and suffers from trauma, PTSD, depression, and anger. She struggles with her academics, which requires Claire to take off work without pay when she has to attend school meetings. She is frequently the caretaker of her younger sibling while Claire is working and childcare is not available. Remember, her brother barely contributes. Claire's youngest child is a three-year-old girl she is potty trained and enrolled in daycare, which is a subsidized cost. But Claire struggles to pick her up on time due to inconsistent public transportation. This leads to extra costs for overtime care. The girl's father is in jail, so Claire is not receiving any child support. Claire does receive job and family services subsidized child care for her three-year-old daughter. She is only required to pay $150 a month to the daycare center. Claire's aging 75-year-old mother lives close by, two miles down the road. Her mother suffers from type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, and generalized anxiety disorder. She is currently on Social Security income, and she's a source of child care support when she's feeling well. Claire also has a 45-year-old brother who is not employed. He's what you would call a leech. Additionally, the kids brought home a stray dog and Claire didn't have the strength to say they couldn't keep it, but she can't afford vet bills or monthly heartworm, flea, or tick medication. She also has not registered this dog with the county because of the costs associated. Overall, Claire spends about $25 a month on dog food. Claire and her children rent a three bedroom older home in the Southeast section of Canton for $700 a month. The home is in poor condition with an unresponsive landlord which means Claire has to deal with the disrepair or has to scrape by to mend the issues. The home does not have a washer or dryer, nor does it have central air. Therefore, Claire has to pay to use the laundromat in addition to purchasing laundry detergent, softener, and bleach. The bus stop is down the street from the house, which is located in a crime-ridden neighborhood with no local grocery store. There's a church on the nearby corner which operates as a respite for the youngest child and supports the family at times. Claire is enrolled in the budget plans with both the gas and electric companies. This makes it easier for her to maintain her monthly budget. Otherwise, her payment amounts would fluctuate with bills for one or the other being higher depending on the season. Claire graduated from high school and worked minimum wage jobs to make ends meet. After working part-time as a cleaning staff at a bank, her case manager informed her of a certification program at Stark State 
that could kickstart her career in banking. She completed that one-year program and has been working as a full-time bank teller for eight years in Alliance, presently making $14 an hour. Recently, Claire was presented with a promotion and a raise of $1.60 an hour, but she is battling whether to take it, as the raise will make her ineligible for public benefits and force her to make cuts in her already slim budget. As you will see, Claire does not live without financial strain and has significant public support. If she was to take the promotion, her insurance would cost an extra $200 a month and come with a $5,000 deductible. Currently, Claire and her two daughters are on Medicaid. If she decides to take the promotion, her income will exceed the Medicaid threshold and increase her expenses by $200 a month for medical insurance alone plus additional co-pays. This dilemma is known as the benefits cliff. Her oldest child, a 19-year-old boy, is an adult and on his own Medicaid plan. Claire's medical needs include type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure with blurred vision due to the start of macular degeneration as a symptom of her uncontrolled blood sugar. This causes her to wear glasses as well. Unfortunately, Claire had to have surgery a few years ago to remove a ruptured gallbladder. Her insurance did not cover all of these expenses, so she is responsible for the remaining balance. To avoid being turned over to a collection agency, she has worked out a payment plan with the hospital. Claire rides two buses to get to and from work in Alliance. She pays $45 for a monthly SARTA bus pass with unlimited rides. When taking the bus, her commute times can take up to three hours of her day. She frequently has to pay others for rides to and from work if she misses the bus or the route schedules are not convenient either for work or personal commitments. If she does not get off work until 6.30 p.m., she typically cannot expect to get home until around 8 p.m. This limits her availability to her younger children on those evenings. If she had a working car, this commute would take 30 minutes. However, she does not. Her car has been parked for quite some time in need of a new transmission, which she cannot afford. Claire was physically abused by her previous boyfriend, the father of her daughters, for years. He is currently in jail on another offense for one more year. Her children witnessed this traumatic violence and the eldest tried to retaliate. Being a victim and witness to domestic violence has led to many mental issues in the family such as PTSD, trauma, depression, and anxiety. The children are not performing to their fullest capacity, seek emotional love from unstable friends, self-medicate with drugs, and isolate in depression. Now that you know about Claire's real-life story and the challenges she faces, it's time to join a community conversation, think big, and brainstorm ways to help Claire and her family escape the cycle of poverty.